Hey everyone, in this video we're going to go over Activity 10-3, Logging Performance Data. This is from the MCTS Guide to Microsoft Windows 7. In my edition of the book, this activity starts on page 475. Alright, so to begin, we're going to go ahead and open up our performance monitor. And on the left hand side, we want to expand the data collector sets and select system. And here we have two predefined sets that have already been created by the system for common maintenance tasks. So we're going to come down here and take a look at the events trace sessions. Um, these are trace providers used by the system to collect system performance data. Under user defined, we have nothing currently. When we create a new data collector set, it will be placed here so we can review it. So let's go ahead and create one. We're going to right click on user defined, hover over new, and select data collector set. We're going to go ahead and call this CPU and disk logging. and select next to create it from a template we can go through and read through these it'll give a brief description of what, what is covered in these sets um, once you've read through them go ahead and select basic and hit next and then we're going to accept the default uh, root directory here we're just going to take a look system drive, perf logs so that stands for performance logs, in case you were wondering. Keep in mind that. I know that does come up on some of the quizzes, I think. So let's go ahead and hit next. We'll keep that as the default. Run as default, that's fine. But let's go ahead and select open properties for this data collector set. And we'll hit finish. Alright, so in the properties for that set, we're going to look at the general tab. We have that basic description again. And if we scroll down in here, we see that it requires at least an administrator privilege to run this set. So it needs to be run as an administrator, anybody with the administrator privileges. Um, our directory tab is going to show us again where these logs are being saved. And we can give it a different naming format, or we can keep this standard um, generic, which is going to be year, month, day, backslash, and then it's just going to start doing one-up numbers, I think, here. You can prefix it with computer name or not. It has to as underneath the stop condition tab. You see that it's only set to run for one minute, and then it automatically stop. So let's go ahead and leave that as the default. And then we want to expand user defined, and we should see that in both locations. When we click on it, we can see exactly what it's going to be counting. So let's go ahead and look at the performance counter properties. And so we note that all processor counters are going to be logged by default here. We're going to go ahead and hit add. I'm going to come up to physical disk and expand it. I want so we can see everything contained within physical disk. So we'll hit add to include everything from the physical disk. Alright. And we'll go ahead and hit OK. 
Okay. Um, note that the log format is in binary here. Alright, then we'll hit OK. We'll close the properties. So when we select user defined, we can see that logging has been stopped. for our man-made set, so there's no logging running currently. We can start it up here, or you can right-click on it and hit Start. And then generally you want to wait about a minute or so to let it run its counters and then automatically stop. So while that's running, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. We will come back in just a minute. Alright, so that's a little more than a minute, but in any case, it let our logging finish. So our next step is going to be to click up here on Performance Monitor. And we're going to select this option up here for View Log Data. We want to click Log Files and hit Add. Select Admin and open it. CPU and disk logging. Open that up. We want this folder. It's the only one available. It's the one that we just created. And we want to open this performance counter .blg and then hit open. In the time range we want to go ahead and hit that button and this shows the time range for that whole log which should only be about a minute. So then we want to select the data tab. So um, the instruction says remove anything that's in here. Ours is already empty by default here. So we're just going to go add. We want to do physical disk. Go ahead and expand it. We want the idle time right here. So we'll go ahead and add that in. <coughs> and then we want to minimize that and expand processor. And again, select the idle time and add that in. We'll go ahead and click OK. And then we'll see that they're both listed here in the counters. We'll say OK. And so that'll save and display it here. down here we see that we have idle time for the physical disk is in red. So the lower this is, the less it was idle. The higher it is, the more it was idle. Same with the processor. So higher means it was it had more idle time, which means it was in use less. We can go ahead and hit our plus button. And we see that only the physical disk counters and processor counters are available because those are the only ones we selected for our data set. And we can note that everything is available because everything was recorded in that log. The only things that we're doing here when we add is telling you to add it to our graph basically so we can display it and view it but you don't have to do all of them as we just showed you can only you can select just you know one or two pieces and compare them that way so even though it's not showing everything on here everything for the physical disk is included in that log we're just opting to only show idle time in any case it looks like that brings us to the end of the instructions and the end of the video so I'm gonna go ahead and close everything and I'll see you in my next video.